Hey guys, now we will be learning about Escherichia coli. Escherichia coli, they are otherwise known as E. coli. They are coming under the group Enterobacteria. That means uh, Enterobacteria means they inhabit in the gut of humans. And those bacteria are grouped under Enterobacteriaceae. Coming to E. coli, they are gram-negative rods, they are highly motile with a flagella and pili all over the body. They are facultative anaerobes, oxidase negative, catalase positive. This is an important uh, property of this E. coli because all other members coming under enterobacteria, they are catalase negative. Only this E. coli is catalase positive and it it is a unique feature of this E. coli. They are lactose fermenter. E. coli are lactose fermenter. That means they can utilize lactose and form pink colonies when grown on McConkey agar. And uh, one more thing is that E. coli can be selectively grown in eosine methylene blue agar, otherwise known as EMB agar. The colonies will be having green metallic sheen color. This E. coli colonies will be having green metallic sheen uh, on this EMB agar. They are capsulated and most of the strains, E. coli strains are non-pathogenic. They form the normal flora of the human but when they comes in, in, when they enters into the bloodstream, they may become pathogenic. Coming to the antigens, which is present in the E. coli, there are mainly three types of antigens are there. O antigen, which is present on LPS, lipopolysaccharide, or otherwise it is known as endotoxin. As this E. coli is gram-negative, almost all the gram-negative bacteria are having this endotoxin, which is an attribute of this lipopolysaccharide. Gram-negative bacteria all gram negative bacteria will be having lipopolysaccharide on their cell wall and all those bacteria will be having endotoxin as antigen and in case of this e coli the o antigen which is present on the lps is also known as endotoxin the second antigen it is k antigen which is present in the capsule and h antigen it is present in the flagella of this E. coli and one important thing is that this E. coli are differentiated on the basis of the antigens present in them that means for example EHEC, EHEC otherwise enterohemorrhagic E. coli the one strain is their strains are denoted as uh, mentioning the antigens that means uh, in case of EHEC several strains of EHEC will be there to denote to denote specifically the antigens will be mentioned like O157 and H7 this EHEC this strain is having this antigen clear then coming to the infectivity they cause all the enterobacteria cause gastrointestinal diseases, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, etc. Enterobacteria that inhabit the gut or intestine of the humans, they cause gastrointestinal diseases. Obvious. It is obvious. And uh, it, uh, on the base, basis of the type of gastroenteritis they are causing, the E. coli are mainly four types. They are Enterotoxigenic E. coli, ETEC, Enteropathogenic E. coli, EPEC, Enterohemorrhagic E. coli, EHEC, and Enteroinvasive E. coli, EIEC. Coming to the first one, ETEC. They are they cause travelers diarrhea. The name travelers diarrhea is given to the disease caused by ETEC because it was in older times it was contracted among the people who travel to 
Mexico. In Mexico, they may happen to drink contaminated water from there and these travelers may get this type of specific type of diarrhea and so the disease is known as travelers diarrhea and it is transmitted through the contaminated water. The pathogenesis of this travelers diarrhea is that uh, heat label toxin will be produced by this ETEC enterotoxigenic E. coli and uh, it binds to this LT toxin binds to the signal receptor on the cells of the intestine and it causes the elevation of the level of cyclic AMP which in turn results in the loss of water and other ions from the endothelial cells that lines the intestine and it eventually leads to watery diarrhea. The, an easy, there is an easy way to remember the disease caused by this type of bacteria that is ETEC. This, there is this T in the name of this E. coli and it may be connected with the T for travelers diarrhea. That is why I made it in this different color. Okay. And the second one, it is EPEC. Here also there is one uh, trick to remember the uh, name of this bacteria EPEC and the P may be connected to the disease caused in the pediatric age group. The EPEC causing cause the disease diarrhea caused by EPEC it is common among the pediatric age group so it can be connected like that. Coming to the disease they cause watery diarrhea for a long duration. It may persist uh, to a long time. And it occurs due to the fecal oral transmission of bacteria and it is common in pediatric age group. And the third type of E. coli it is EHEC, enterohemorrhagic E. coli. It is caused, it causes uh, bloody diarrhea. That means blood will be there in the feces. And it is due to the endotoxin present in the LPS. It may cause hemolytic uremic syndrome or HUS. This we have mentioned in in the in the last slide, I mean last class in which we learned about Shigella. This Shigella also causes this hemolytic uremic syndrome. The toxin produced by Shigella is Shiga toxin and this endotoxin produced by EHEC this both toxin cause the similar symptoms that is hemolytic uremic syndrome and it is transmitted through undercooked meat and then coming to the last type of E. coli that is enteroinvasive E. coli they also cause the bloody diarrhea the last two EHEC and EIEC both cause bloody diarrhea and HUS hemolytic uremic syndrome. This EIEC it is usually non-pathogenic in gut but when the toxic toxin enters the blood stream it causes infection. The other complication caused by this EIEC is colitis. Colitis means inflammation of the colon region of intestine. The other infection caused by E. coli are UTI, urinary tract infection. It is caused by the binding of this E. coli to the urothelial cells. And they can also cause neonatal meningitis when enter into the brain cells. It is caused due to the K antigen present in the capsule of this E. coli. And the other uh, infection is that gram-negative sepsis due to the endotoxin. Coming to the pathogenesis of E. coli. All the four types of E. coli cause diarrhea characterized by loss of water from the intestinal cells and eventually dehydration. The source of the infection is the contaminated food and water. The diarrhea it is caused by the endotoxins produced by the E. coli. 
there are two types of endotoxin heat stable or st endotoxin and heat labile lt toxin st toxin cause the elevation of cgmp cyclic gmp and in case of heat labile lt toxin cause the elevation of cyclic amp this lt toxin when attaches to the receptors the receptors are present in the intestinal cells these are the uh, microvilli on the uh, intestinal surface this is the cross section of intestine the intestine is having numerous microvilli and on this microvilli there are receptors for uh, receptors present on the cell surface so to these receptors the lt toxin get attached and as a result the signal signaling will be on for a long time that means uh, there will across the cell membrane there will be transport or exchange of ions sodium chloride water etc will be exchanged exchanged between the cell intestinal cell and the gut it is through a transmembrane protein transmembrane protein which is present on the cell surface so in this transfer of this ions through the transmembrane protein it is controlled by chemical signaling and it is, this chemical signaling is uh, managed by this cyclic amp it involves signaling involves the cyclic amp and when this lt toxin produced by the e coli attaches to the receptors this signaling will be on for a long time so it causes the uh, increase in the concentration of adenylate cyclase enzyme um, which usually catalyzes the conversion of atp to cyclic amp so this increase in the concentration of adenylate cyclase causes the increased production of cyclic amp and this as the concentration of cyclic amp increases inside the cell the electrolyte and all other ion balance will be lost because the CAMP cyclic AMP uh, induces or increase the release of sodium chloride and water sodium and chloride ions and water from the cells into the gut this cyclic AMP uh, increases the release of sodium and chloride ions and water from the cells into the gut so this uncontrolled release of this water and ions into the gut causes the diarrhea and which leads to the dehydration of the cells and the treatment for this is uh, using antibiotics like ampicillin cefotaxim trimethoprim etc and important thing is that to keep personal hygiene and use uncontaminated food and water also we have to maintain the electrolyte and water balance in the body by using ors oral rehydration solution we can balance the electrolyte and water in the body hope you all understand the topic thank you for listening